So my passion is leading children outside to hunt for wild, even edible mushrooms. So I'll start with a disclaimer, and it's not the one about mushrooms being poisonous. Everyone's heard that a lot already, right? It is the one about mushroom foragers like myself being slightly kooky. Kooky means a little passionate and odd about the thing that we love to do, which is forage. Foraging means to go look for something you want to hunt for or use. I am a second generation mushroom forager. My parents were serious mushroom hunters. My mom, when she died, even wanted to be buried with shiitake spores thrown in on her grave so she could come back as a mushroom. I think she's here in the spirit world. My son, Mason, in that picture, he is holding a huge morel. He started foraging as a young child and note the pacifier in his hand. I am no help. I just wrote a children's book about foraging and now I'm going across America to talk about the benefits of mushroom foraging in the woods with children. That's my daughter. But why should you want to start a relationship with wild mushrooms? Aren't they poisonous? What about all those creatures that hang out with them, like slime molds and bugs and slugs? And what is that cool creature? Whew. Well, I'm going to suggest that a curiosity about mushrooms and all of nature is at the heart of the long-term care of our planet. In fact, it's essential because when you're out foraging, you're immersed in nature, fully in the outdoors. You're searching and you're totally present and you feel alive. And mushrooms connect infinitely in the ground underneath us. And that is the essence of a model of connectivity. And connectivity is what fuels our desire to maintain the planet as we know it, right? Yeah. So I come to you on behalf of the mushrooms. They've gotten a bad rap. They're so generous and they are misunderstood. Did you know that without fungus, we don't exist? They do everything for us. In this case, the little white web, you see that, of mycelium is what that's called. That is taking apart that leaf so that it becomes soil so that our trees can grow. What? And you may not know that fungi, in the form of like yeast, it makes all your bread, it makes alcohols, cheese, yogurt, even penicillin. And it's responsible for all that good stuff that goes on in your gut. So mushrooms are all around us, and sometimes they're hiding, like these sneaky little black trumpet mushrooms. Can anybody see them? There's one, and there's a whole bunch, and they are delicious mushrooms that are hard to find. You can, great. And it's not just mushrooms. It's nature and the outdoors in general that's just been put at arm's length, right? Primarily because of this thing we call technology. Can you imagine what it would be like if we were as centered in nature as we are in digital technology? I'm so happy to be in this room with you here doing TED, but what I really want to do is be out in the woods where the mushrooms are and also in the parks and the playgrounds and coming out of the sidewalks. So this rendition behind me is a little bit of the problem because in here we don't have 
the smell of those ferns. We don't have the surprise of a salamander under the leaf. And we definitely do not have the touch of that soft moss on a rock. There's an author named Richard Louvre, and he writes about the importance of being outdoors, especially for kids. And he says, the more high tech we become, the more nature we need. Because in nature, we use all of our five senses. And this is what is called the optimal state of learning. Even the sixth sense of the mystical or the spiritual, magical, can be accessed when you're outdoors. And these are fungal fairies. And this is a fairy ring. And those mushrooms are growing in a circle like that. Do you see them? Around the tree roots that are underneath the surface. Think of all that connectivity going on. And if you go out in the woods and you pick mushrooms, you can. Please don't let anyone tell you that you cannot touch a mushroom. You can. They don't run away. They don't bite. You just cannot eat a mushroom that you don't have 100% knowledge what it is. And definitely you should cook them. But you can always admire those gorgeous colors. You can touch that smooth, or in this case, slimy cap. And if you're lucky and you learn how to forage a few beginner mushrooms, you can taste that meaty and earthy flavor that they have, and they are super nutritious. These are spring morels being cooked up in butter, and they don't look like the ones that you get at the store, right? They taste even better than the ones from the store, too. So I'm going to suggest a different lens for which we view the fungal world. And through this lens, mushrooms lose their bad reputation, and in fact, we become curious about them. It's mostly just here in America, actually, that foraging is a no-no, because in most of the rest of the world, it's a popular pastime, and it's passed down through generations, and they know that the best way to learn to forage safely is, just like other hobbies that are out, done outdoors, through a mushroom club or experienced foragers who take you outside and in person. And maybe that's why mushrooms are having their moment right now, because people are getting so much connectivity from them. There is a flourishing subculture of kooky foragers like myself who are eager to share our knowledge and excitement about the fungal world, and maybe even climb a tree to pick those high mushrooms that are up there. You see those ones? Yeah. He's climbing that tree to get them. Once you begin to learn, mushroom hunting is the ultimate treasure hunt. Here I am unearthing a very hidden Matsutake mushroom, and it's absolutely beautiful, so fun to find. As you learn your mushrooms one by one, the bonus is you can get a basket full that at the store might sell for upwards of $30 a pound, and you just scored them for free. But maybe you don't care for the taste of mushrooms. Maybe you don't like their texture. That's fine. You can still grab a friend, tell them, don't be afraid. Go outside, take a walk, just to touch them, to smell them, to interact with them, photograph them, relate to them, marvel at them. Baba Dayum of Senegal said at the UN General Assembly, my favorite quote, in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand. And we will understand only what we're taught. When we become curious, even excited to be taught, we learn that fungi are deeply connected to the earth, and we are deeply connected to fungi. When you develop what I call mushroom eyes, and you go out and look for them, you see that they're everywhere. And the good news is that when mushrooms thrive in their environments, we thrive too. The mushrooms await 
I invite you to go outside, get curious, and find them.